uh, as long as we're safe. So let's um, carry on. Ooh, that was scary. So the CARE Act, there's an individual stimulus, uh, a few minutes on that. Uh, individuals with adjusted gross income, single individuals with 75,000 simple math there, head of household, 125,000, and you get the full stimulus. Uh, it gets cut down $5 for every $100 of income above the threshold, 75,000 for individuals, 150 for married couples. Um, payments um, amount is entirely phased out at AGI, adjusted gross income, of 99,000 for individuals and 198,000 for married couples. There's also a $500 credit for each dependent child defined by the child tax credit under the age of 17. Just, uh, you can go on to the Washington Post calculator if you just Google Washington Post calculator and find out what your refund will be if you're in the phase out range. So that's a helpful little tool. Uh, the IRS will deposit uh, the amount directly into your bank account um, using your 2019 tax return. Not a problem if you haven't filed the 2019 tax return. They'll use your 2018 tax return. Uh, we have some clients who maybe were on employment in 2018 and their AGI adjusted gross income was less than 18 to 19. So we're holding off on filing the returns if they're in that threshold. So a little bit of planning there. Uh, the IRS says the direct deposit should be in your bank account in about three weeks. Checks will start arriving in about six to eight weeks. Technically, the stimulus rebate is for 2020 refundable tax credit. Refundable means you get it even if you don't have a tax liability. The payment received in the next few weeks and it's an IRS advance. If you have less income in 2020 than in 2019 because of layoffs, reduced hours, closed business, uh, your rebate uh, payment was reduced by the income threshold you receive a credit for the difference in 2020. If for some reason you receive too much advance payment, you don't have to pay it back. That's just yours to keep. So it's a nice little stimulus. Um, it's not much, but, but it helps. Every little bit helps. Let's talk about what uh, most people are here for, the SBA loan options. And these are available for small businesses, whether you're incorporated, uh, whether you're a sole proprietor, whether you're a not-for-profit they are available. And one thing I want everybody to get from this webinar is to apply. Uh, most people uh, have applied so far, but if you haven't, please right after the seminar apply. Uh, you may get the, the, up to a $10,000 grant. You may get some debt relief. Um, so just that's probably why you're here is to find out more and apply. So there are several options. There's the Paycheck Protection Program, PPP. There's the Emergency Economic Grant of $10,000. There is a small business debt relief program and other resources. And there's also the economic injury disaster loan. We'll talk about these in detail. So the economic injury disaster loan and emergency economic injury grant, uh, the grant is up to $10,000 and you need to apply for the EIDL, uh, the economic injury disaster loan. So that is the process for getting the grant. It's the online application. When we first started, it, uh, it, was, uh, it was difficult. It was online, it crashed a lot. It wasn't as easy as it is now. They've made it very simple as of this Monday, a few days ago. Uh, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes once you get onto the site to um, apply. They, they, you need a little bit of information. Uh, you need your tax ID number, you need the uh, date you started, and that's probably the date that present management uh, is there because most people started their own business unless you bought it from somebody else, which could be a possibility. You need your last 12 months uh, revenue. You need your cost of goods sold. And that is about it for the information that you need for research. Then you need your social security number, your name, things of that nature. Hopefully you know that. Um, just don't do it after you really can't even go out to the bars these days. But uh, so you have to apply for a loan. You don't have to accept the loan, but they want to give you the grant quickly. They say that they want to give you the grant in three days. Obviously, it won't be three days. They're inundated with applications, but you apply for the loan. Uh, then they'll give you the grant, whatever you qualify for. And I don't know what the qualifications are, to be honest, but it could be up to $10,000 and a grant you don't have to pay back. And whether you take the loan or not, uh, it, you still get to keep the grant. And the loan is at 3.75 and could be up to 30 years. 
uh, we have questions. Can you apply for multiple loans and multiple grants if you have multiple companies with multiple EIN numbers? The question is yes. Will you be accepted? I don't know, but it'd be silly not to spend 10 or 15 minutes applying and let them say no to you. So um, once again, apply, apply, apply. If you have a sole proprietorship, apply. If you have a real estate holding company that holds the, the building that you, you rent in, apply for that one as well. You have nothing to lose. And then if you can, later on, when they give you the, the loan, you can choose to take the loan or not take the loan. And we'll talk about the integration with the Economic Injury Disaster Loan with the Paycheck Protection Program, PPP. So the EIDO are lower interest rate loans, 3.75%, uh, with principal and interest deferment uh, at the administration discretion. Who is eligible? Those eligible to file with, uh, with 500 or fewer employees. Once you get onto the site, that's the first question to, that is asked. And most people who are either a corporation or partnership should check that, um, that option. Unless you're a sole proprietor, then you check the option underneath. Um, S corps, C corps, LLC partnerships can, can apply cooperative employee owned business. Um, so, uh, it's, it's really open to everybody, but most, most people here are small S Corps uh, or LLC partnerships or sole proprietors, and you all should apply and apply for all the entities that you have. I'm not saying that you're going to get to the, uh, uh, get the grant for every entity, but again, it'd be silly not to try and let them say no to you. Uh, Not-for-profits can apply as well, um, and the deadline to apply is December 31st, 2020, but realistically, it's now. You know, I don't know how much the stimulus money is going to last, but it, it is a generous deadline, but you want to apply as soon as possible. So the PPP, uh, Paycheck Protection Program, we will talk more about that in detail in, in a few minutes or a couple of minutes, um, but you can, as we understand it now, integrate them and have both. So the grant is taken off the loan or the PPP uh, program, Paycheck Protection Program, and Paycheck Protection Program is used for, for payroll um, and overhead, defined as utilities and rent. So uh, the, our understanding is, and this is very new, but if you get the loan and the PPP program, as long as you don't use the money for the same purpose, you use the PPP money for payroll and utilities and rent, and you use the loan money for maybe capital equipment, maybe purchasing another building of sorts, but don't commingle the money, uh, that should be fine. Uh, that's not 100%. We're still uh, researching that. I'm talking to people who are talking to the SBA and trying to get guidance on that, but that would be a good thing. You know, so this, uh, this, this web link is important. Uh, it brings you right to the application. And again, the application takes minutes to um, complete. You can get that off my uh, splash page, I guess they call that, sorantocpapc.com. Uh, and then we'll, we have it on our website as well. Uh, the Paycheck Protection Program. So once again, all the businesses are eligible. So proprietorship, S-Corps, partnership, unique partnerships, uh, not-for-profits. Uh, you need to have payroll though, and you need to have employees of 500 or fewer. The way it works is you take your average monthly payroll from February, 5th, February of 2019 to June of 2019. Uh, for example, let's say your average payroll during that time frame was $10,000. You multiply that by two and a half times, so that would be 25, 10,000 times two and a half would be $25,000. And then you have three months to spend that $25,000 on payroll, utilities, and rent or more, uh, a mortgage if you have a mortgage. Uh, let's say you spend only 20,000 of that 25,000. Well, 20,000 is forgiven. The 5,000 is a loan that's payable in, at 4% over 10 years. If you use the full 25,000 for payroll, rent, and utilities, then the full 25,000 is forgiven. Um, let's go back to our first example where you use 20,000 or 25,000. You have 5,000 left over, you choose not to take the loan because you have the 5,000 in your bank account. You can just pay it back or any percentage of it back. You can you know, take a loan for 3,000, pay back 2,000, any, any sort of combination thereof. 
So what costs are eligible for, the, for payroll? Uh, certainly compensation of employees, uh, payment for vacation, parent, family, medical, sick leave, uh, allowance for dismissal or separation, um, uh, group health benefits, so if you have um, health insurance, that, that those costs counts. Payment of any retirement benefits, payments to state or local tax assess and compensation of employees. Uh, employees compensation over 100,000 does not count, so only the first 100,000 of compensation counts. Anything over 100,000 uh, is not included in the average cost calculation or the payback calculation. Anybody outside of the US doesn't count as well. What is allowable uses of loan proceeds, payroll costs, as we discussed, costs related to health insurance, salaries, uh, payments of interest on mortgage obligations, not the principal, just the interest, rent and utilities. And interest on any other debt obligations which were incurred before the covered period. So it's, it's pretty flexible. They give you a two and a half times. So they give you one time for um, the payroll and one and a half times for overhead. And again, if you don't use it, it's, it's not a huge deal. It's a low interest rate loan amortized over 10, 10 years. Not, not a big deal either. Uh, I believe we covered all these. One thing I did not cover, and I, I forgot, is the economic injury disaster loan. That loan is based on your sales for the last 12 months, divided uh, minus your cost of goods sold, divided by two. So if your sales were 100,000 and you had 20,000 of cost of goods sold, you'd have 80,000 left over. Divide that by two and you would get a $40,000 emergency, the uh, economic injury disaster loan. I forgot to mention that and put that in the slide, but just wanted to uh, put that out there. Uh, where should I go for the PPP loan? So the economic injury disaster loan, you apply directly with the SBA with that link that we saw previously. For the PPP loan, you need to go to a bank or SBA 7 lender or a broker who uh, brokers SBA loans. You cannot go to the SBA for the uh, PPP loan, which maybe is a good thing because you have somebody helping you. Now, the PPP loan was approved by President Trump on Friday, late on Friday. Uh, and the SBA is still putting a loan application together. So you, at present, you can't apply for the PPP loan. Um, they're in, SBA is anticipating to have their applications ready by Friday. Uh, Whether they do or not remains to be seen, but we'll send an email blast when the PPP uh, loans are ready for the SBA to administer. At the present time, they are not ready, but we should be applying for the EIDL loan if you haven't. And if you, if you haven't, please do so right after the seminar or by the end of the day today, really important. So there is also a small business debt relief program. If you do have a present SBA loan, uh, the SBA will cover all loan payments on these SBA loans, including principal, interest, and fees for six months. Uh, this relief will also be available for new borrowers who take out loans within six months of the president signing the bill into law of last Friday. So if you do have an SBA loan presently, uh, you're covered for six months, or if you take out a new one, you're covered for six months. All right, that's the end of our brief presentation. Uh, hopefully it was informative. I am gonna to go to questions now. Uh, can you apply for available assistance for PPP, IDL, and the payroll tax deferral? Uh, the answer is yes, with a cautious yes, because the guidance is still coming out on that, but I, as long as you don't commingle. Can a person who owns more than one company apply for the loans? Yes, you can apply for each company, let them deny you if that is the case. Uh, is insurance included as a forgivable expense? Um, I'm not sure I follow that. Health insurance is a cost for the PPP program. So if that's what that question means. Uh, so good question uh, that I don't know the answer for, but I'll repeat it. What if you only have 1099s employees and no payroll employees? Uh, I believe that counts as long as those 1099s work for nobody else. That is a rumor that I heard. I will get back to people on that, but that is a very good question that I've had before. Does a 10,000 grant always get subtracted from a PPP forgiveness portion? I believe it does get uh, 
out of the PPP portion, yes. Can any of these programs pay back business loans we took this week before the, this was approved? Unfortunately, I don't know. Uh, but these are things we can look into. It is a, a very new program, so we're trying to get the information out to people, the basic information as, as quick as possible um, without misleading them. Uh, somebody wanted to see the links again, so let's, uh, let's get back to the links. Oops. There we go. It's probably a good, um, a good slide to be on. So the COVID19relief.sba.gov with the hash mark on it. What was the math for the PPP loan again? The math for the PPP loan was you take the average monthly payroll from February 2019 to June 2019, multiply that by two and a half, and that would be your loan amount. Um, I have an LLC and an independent worker. Can I apply for a business loan uh, in an individual grant? Yes, you can if you're a sole proprietor in the LLC disregarded entity. If my employees are laid off now with the PPP, I would pay them to stay home. Uh, well, hopefully you can pay them to work. Um, so if uh, if you get the PPP, you, you wanna get it when you're available to work. So just cause you're um, accepted for the PPP, just mean you have to uh, get it right then and there. There's a practical portion of it. I'm thinking this, this, this I'm making up, but uh, they said once you apply for the EIDL loan, uh, you have time to accept it. I imagine it will be the same for the PPP, that they're not gonna force you to take the PPP while a contractor can't go out to work. So you can take it when you can, you're freed up and go to work. So you don't have to pay your people to stay home is, is my guess. There, there is, will be some common sense here. Uh, will this cover software subscription used for the business? No, that's not, um, the, the, Economic development loan, you can. The PPP is not used for software. Are there exclusions for PPP? Example, owner salary. Uh, salary is over 100,000, yes, but owner salary do, do count. O or employee salary is over a certain dollar amount. Yes, the first 100,000 counts. Anything over 100,000 doesn't count for the PPP. Does a company have to show and track where the SBA grant money is spent. Not the $10,000, I believe not the EIDL, but the PPP, yes. You have to spend the PPP on payroll, utilities, and rent or mortgage interest or debt interest. On the personal side, if you did your taxes already, do you have to fill out any paperwork for 1200? No, 1200 is automatic. That's gonna go right into the bank account that you had in 2019 for your deposit. Or if you didn't file your 2019 taxes, they'll go for your 2018 bank account. Hopefully you still have the same bank account. If not, it'll bounce back and it will send you a check. How much, well, good question. How much weight does personal credit score carrying considering eligibility of loans? Zero, none. Um, it, it, they're not based on credit worthiness. Can you use the loan for advertising expense? Yes, but not the PPP loan. PPP, we mentioned ad nauseum, I'm not ad nauseum, but you know, payroll, utilities, and rent. And then the other loan, the economic injury disaster loan can be used for any legitimate purpose. You just don't want to commingle it to, you don't want to use the two to pay for the same payroll or pay for the same rent. After I submit my application, do I get an email confirmation immediately? No, you just get a confirmation at the end with a, with a large number. So there is no email confirmation that I'm aware of. So <laughs> I love Melanie. 
applying for 10,000 grant is a no brainer. Yes, applying for $10,000 grant is a no brainer, please do it. PPP seems like a lot more involved. That's why you have the banks or an SBA person helping you. Uh, if your employees are part-time per diem and you start to get them back to work, should you apply for the PPP or is it okay not to? It's certainly okay not to. Nobody's uh, telling you to apply for it, but it would be smart to apply for it because the government's giving you money to help pay for the employees. Maybe your business is not as robust as it was back in February to June of 2019 and you don't spend all the money. Well, that's not a bad thing. Then you have another loan or you just give the money back. But yes, I would apply. If somebody's giving you help during these times, please take it. And, you know, if it's hard work to apply, that's okay. Show me how to make money without, um, without working hard and I'll push you out of the way. Is unemployment available to owners? Yes. As of Friday, they've made um, un unemployment available to owners who are not working, so proprietors who uh, cannot work. So if you're self-employed or you own a company and you can't work because uh, you're not in a um, not an industry that can work, not a, uh, uh, the words escapes me, but you can go to unemployment, absolutely. I would apply right online today, right after this. How do you qualify for this loan forgiveness for the $10,000 grant? You need just to apply. You can do it for any business purpose. For the PPP, you need to apply and use it for payroll, um, rent, and utilities. Would you deduct the salaries over the 100,000 for the PPP from your calculation when you're applying? Yes, I'm sure the bank and the SBA person will do that. Formula for the PPP again is, um, again, the average monthly payroll from February um, 2019 to June 2019 and you multiply that by two and a half, uh, two and a half times. A good question that I'm not know the answer for is it, it is the inquiry on your credit credit score when you apply? Did the inquiry go on your credit score when you apply? I don't know the answer, but I'm assuming no because they're, they're saying it has no bearing on credit. So I'm, I doubt they're checking credit. They just want to get as many money to as many businesses as possible. Uh, good question. What if I'm an owner and only take dividend checks? Can I still take money for payroll? You'd have to take payroll. My, uh, my understanding is that dividend checks do not uh, count as payroll. What if my 2019 income is below the threshold level for the 1200, but the 2018 is not? then it will count your 2019 income. You just have to file your 2019 income. So if the person is over 100,000 in salary, can you use the 100,000 number or does that salary uh, not count? You count the first 100,000, anything above that you don't count. The interest rate on a PPP loan is 4%, uh, amortized over 10 years. The interest rate on the economic injury disaster loan is 3.75%, and that could be for 30 years, up to 30 years. Uh, we have the link to apply for unemployment. Please, uh, you can just Google it, you'll find it. But if you want, email me separately, and we'll email you the link for unemployment. What if you are a new company? You have to be in business at least in January of 2020. Uh, so then you could, can apply if you didn't have, pay, good question. If you didn't have payroll, I didn't cover this. If you didn't have payroll from February to June of 2019, they will use your January and February 2020 payroll, but you need to have payroll. If you're a new company without payroll, I think you're out of luck for a PPP, but you still could be good for the, uh, the grant. Does housing allowance for a minister count as payroll? I don't know. I, I don't know. I would put it in because it is part of his payroll. Let them take it out. That's always been my philosophy. Put it in and let them know that it's housing allowance. And if it, if it doesn't count, they'll take it out. Good question. Do you open a separate banking account to deposit the loan money 
to track payments. I'm going to do that. If I get the PPP loan, I'm putting that in a separate bank account and I'm going to use that just for payroll, rent, and utilities to make it easy. My accountant's not very good, so I want to keep it easy and simple. I like keeping things simple and easy. What about if your business uh, just opened in November of 2019? Am I also covered for the grant? Yes. If you have payroll, they count payroll for January and February of 2020. If you had no payroll, you can have, apply for the PPP. But you can apply for the EIDL. Is there a downside to the PPP that we know about now? I'm afraid of free money from the government. I don't see a downside. If you don't use it, it goes to a loan. If you don't want to take the loan, you just give it back. Um, people are hurting. The government wants to help them. Uh, I believe they're sincere. I don't think uh, they're looking to hurt anybody. I'm looking, they're looking to help people. Is there assistance for rental income when tenants aren't paying? Uh, I've applied for the economic grant and the loan for my rental companies that don't have payroll, so we'll see. The question, the, the answer is apply, apply. Um, it takes 10 or 15 minutes if you have a lot of companies and it's a lot of time, it could be a lot of money, but apply. Uh, so the question is, does the grant get taken off the PPP? I believe it does. Yes, the grant does get taken off the PPP. It's just an advance on a PPP. Um, and if you take the EIDL loan, then the grant is just part of it, but you don't have to pay the $10,000 back. So the EIDL loan, let's say you're, again, you, the formula is your gross revenues for the last 12 months, less your cost of goods sold. So let's say it's 100,000 of gross revenue, 20,000 of cost of goods sold, 80,000 of um, gross profit, uh, divided by two is 40,000, and I believe the 10,000 comes off that 40,000, so you get 30,000 that you'd have to pay back. Uh, good question. Does applying for the EIDL automatically also apply for the emergency economic grant? Yes. There's a last question on the EIDL um, application. Again, it takes 10 or 15 minutes that says, do you want the emergency economic grant of $10,000? Let me give you a hint. Put yes to that, and they're asking for your banking information, don't be afraid to put your banking information in there. That's, that's where you're gonna deposit the money. I'm sorry, I'm just reading the question. So there's a question about a single owner LLC operator. So you, you can get the um, emergency economic EIDL, but um, as far as the PPP, um, if you're a sole proprietor, I'm not sure how that works. I would apply for it anyway and uh, let, let the banks tell you uh, whether you, you can or can't as a sole LLC, a sole proprietor, uh, get the PPP. No prepayment penalties on any loan, so you can prepay those pen, uh, those loans at any time, but those are very generous interest rates and very generous terms. I wouldn't be looking to prepay, but no, there is no prepayment penalty. If you your employees are now on unemployment, are you still qualified for the PPP? Yes, it's based on uh, payroll from uh, February 2019 to June of 2019. So as long as you have payroll in that period, and if you didn't, then they'll look at payroll for January and February of 2020. Is a $10,000 grant only forgivable if it's rolled over to PPP loan? No, it's forgivable the minute they give it to you. So if you do nothing else, get the $10,000 grant and don't apply for anything else, and then they tell you you can get a loan as well and you decline the loan, you still keep the $10,000 grant. So that once you get up to the $10,000 grant, let's say you get three, four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000, that's yours to keep. You can do what you want with in, in business purpose. You can use it for payroll, you can use it for rent, equipment, uh, and you don't have to take the subsequent loan if you don't want to, but the grant is yours. Just to clarify, economic injury disaster loan is the grant, correct? No, the loan is the loan. 
uh, you have to use a loan application to get the grant. And then later, they want to give the grant quickly. They say within three days, nobody, no, nobody thinks it's gonna be within three days, but their intent is to get it to you quickly. And the grant is at 10, 000, up to 10,000 that you get to keep. And then they'll give you a loan later that uh, you can take or not take at 3.75% up to 30 years. It could be up to 30 years. EIDL money, is it okay to put into a main bank account a good idea to separate? EIDL money, since you don't have to track it, like the PPP money, I'd say it's, it's fine to put in, in your regular operating account. PPP money, I, I'd like to separate, see separated, no legal requirements, but just good business practice to put the PPP, PPP money into a separate bank account so you can easily track it, make my life as an accountant simpler, and make your accounting fees less. Uh, but no, just, uh, just do it to track. That, that's the last part was just silly. Uh, yes, I feel the PPP loan should be in a separate account, but it doesn't have to be. You do, not, uh, do you have to show uh, proof of what the grant money was used? No, the grant money is yours. It's once you get it, it you can do what you like with it. Please invest it wisely. Uh, if you have a, a significant increase in payroll after June of 2019, can you use that amount? Not that I know of, but uh, when you apply at your bank or with an SBA lender, that's a good question to ask them. What is the expected turnaround EID loan application? Good question. I don't know. Uh, I would say uh, my guess is a couple of months, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I know that people are applying like crazy. Can S Corp owners apply for unemployment? Yes, as of um, as of Friday, S Corp owners can apply for unemployment if they're not a uh, if they are out of work and, and cannot work cannot work. So, all right, I believe that is the end of the questions. Um, brief um, webinar. I hope it was uh, useful to your participants. Once again, you and your families be safe, be healthy. If there's any questions, feel free to call or email me. If you want the link, just email me and I will send you a link for the, um, the grant and with the SBA loan, which turns into a grant or an employment or any other way I can help anybody, please uh, reach out to me. Thank you, be safe.